Hey everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of Flick News. Isola here with Flick Direct, and boy do I have a few things to fill you in on. So grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. Now of course we have to speak about Alien Romulus. Romulus just debuted making 45.1 million and 108 million globally, which to some was way above expectation. But for us fans, we knew it was going to be a hit right out of the park. I mean, and that's not just to say because we are fans. It just looked so amazing from the trailers and behind the scenes. And we actually have some interviews up where you just kind of get a little bit more of how they filmed it and what really went into making this film. Now, this is also the first film to knock Deadpool and Wolverine down a peg into second place which it's been out for a while, so, you know, that's not that it was easy, but they still were able to do it. And it has also rated 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. Romulus is set between Alien and Aliens, and it follows young colonists who come across this super creepy space station. This was originally set to be streaming on Hulu, but somehow, and we are all grateful for this, it actually got a theatrical debut. The film stars Kaylee Spaney, David Johnson, Archie Renaud, Isabelle Merced, and Spike Fearn. Even though Deadpool and Wolverine slipped to the second position, it's still the highest rated and grossing rated R film, with over a billion globally. And it made another 29 million this weekend, so it's just gonna keep climbing. Uh, it's gonna be very hard for another movie to beat this unless if it's another Deadpool movie, which you never know. Now, like I said, we have a lot of Alien Romulus interviews, so please be sure to go to the site and check those out because again, there is a lot of information that we got and there's some jokes and a lot of fun in there too, so I think you guys will really enjoy it. And once you've seen the movie, please come back because I will definitely be doing a review on it. I haven't seen it yet, but that will be down the pipeline because, of course, I love to share, you know, how I feel about movies. Because why would we be doing this if not for the movies and how much we love or even dislike them? Next, Kevin Costner's Horizon Chapter 1. Well, like I said in one of the last episodes, didn't really do too well. But we have gotten the go-ahead that it will be streaming on August 23rd, and reluctantly I will be watching it because I need to see why it did so poorly. And of course, you know I love history, so let's count those inaccuracies. Originally when Horizon was released, it made a whopping 11 million and that budget was ridiculously high. I believe it was set about a hundred million and a lot of that came out of Kevin Costner's pocket. So he really believed in this, but apparently fans didn't because no one ran to the theaters to go see it. I mean, it was also competing against a lot of things and uh, it just, it, it was set to fail. Now, with Max giving us the streaming release date, we were also informed that Chapter 2 was being pushed back. And we did have an inkling about that back in the previous episode, but they definitely gave a hard push on that as well. This will give audiences more time to go and watch it on VOD or Max. And then that also allows the studios to see if they should just drop the second chapter to streaming immediately or not drop it at all. I would say that they're definitely going to at least stream it because they've already put so much time and money into it. And you might as well try to make some money off of it instead of completely throwing it away. I'm going to try to predict the future and say don't hold your breath because I really... I'm not feeling too confident about this, but who knows? Maybe watching chapter one when it's released on the 23rd might be a good thing and I might enjoy it. 
but again, based off of all of the reviews, it's, it's not looking very good. Now, like I said, Costner put up a lot of money for these movies, and there are four in total. So if you do the math, at $100 million each, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of money they're going to have to make up. And I don't even know how far they've gotten in chapters three or if they've even started four. Who knows if they've even had to start a rewrite of the, the script because one did so poorly. And I don't know, again, if that was because of what it was up against in uh, the theaters during the release date or if it was just, you know, Costner's expectations just way too high on what he wanted with this. But again, they're really going to have to push hard to get the audiences in because they are going to have to make up a lot of money. So we'll just have to wait and stay tuned to see what happens. Again, I will reluctantly watch this. And if you trust my opinions, at least that will give you an idea of whether or not you should watch it. Take it with a grain of salt. I mean, that's what I usually do because a lot of people aren't really great critics. You know, everybody's got an opinion. You've heard that whole phrase. I'm not going to say it here because it's really not appropriate, but everyone's got one, right? So you can be the judge of whether or not this is going to be a good movie, whether or not you enjoyed it. We might have a difference of opinion, but at the end of the day, the box office doesn't lie. How much the movie's made doesn't lie. So... Take with that what you will. But fingers crossed, we can at least enjoy it. And we're not really spending that much because we're going to be watching it on Max. So again, stay tuned. I'll give you my thoughts. And finally, on a happier note, because you know how excited I am about this, uh, Wake Up Dead Man has finally wrapped up filming. And I'm so excited about this because the first two of the trilogy... I think that's really what they're calling it, the Knives Out trilogy, even though they kind of stand alone. But whatever we call it, we're, we're getting the movie soon. So I'm really, really excited about this, and I cannot wait to see it. Now, you might be asking yourself, how does Isola know that they finished rapping? Well, that's because Ryan Johnson went to Instagram and gave us some behind-the-scenes little clips. Um, and told us that it was wrapping. I don't have my ear to the ground of, you know, the studios and everything, but I'm usually able to figure out or get some notice a little faster than some others. So this is, this is my notice to you to go to Instagram and check out Ryan Johnson's posts, but you know, you've also got some clips up here. So here's a brief recap of what I had discussed a couple months ago in a previous episode. The movie will continue the murder mystery theme, but it promises to have a fresh tone and direction, which is probably why these have been doing so well, because they give you a little bit of a change. So we obviously know Daniel Craig is returning as Detective Blanc, but we also have the rest of the cast. And just to name a few, we have Josh O'Connor, Kaylee Spaney, Andrew Scott. I told you Mila Kunis last time and Kerry Washington, but we also have Josh Brolin. And then of course, Jeremy Renner. I am really excited to see how this darker toned theme works and whether it sets up for future movies or if we're gonna wrap up the Knives Out series. Now, does that mean that Detective Blanc will be retired and we will move on to a different, more origin story maybe from another character? Or will it just end here? I hope it doesn't because I really feel that you can kind of branch off with this. You just have to, especially in this movie, make sure you have a character that will be able to start a whole new trilogy or again whatever you want to call it be sure to check back because i will give you some other trailers that are going to come down the pipeline or maybe even some more behind the scenes if mr johnson wants to share them which i hope they do but i don't want too much because i don't i don't want to know too much going into this 
I really love these movies. They're a lot of fun. And, you know, who doesn't like a great whodunit clue type of movie? Anyway, be sure to check back. I will also let you know my thoughts when I go see it because I will definitely be checking it out, of course, because like I've said a million times already in this episode, I absolutely love it. And with that, this concludes this week's episode of Flick News. Please be sure to like and subscribe to both of our channels. Actually, we have a few more now. And this is primarily so you can watch trailers and other news, but we've also covered a lot of SDCC stuff. There's a ton of interviews, so please be sure to like and subscribe. I have been one busy bee lately, so there's a lot to watch and catch up on. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.